I first met uh, Malcolm uh, in Touch Productions office in London, as it was then, uh, when I was making a, a very concerted effort uh, to switch from corporate production into broadcast television and the documentary side. And uh, Malcolm was one of several companies that I sent a bunch of ideas to on the side of A4. And uh, I was lucky enough to work with Touch Productions for um, three, four years, something like that. So in fact, a lot of what I teach here at Northumbria in terms of documentary production is, uh, is stuff that really I've learned from Malcolm. Um, not just uh, as, a, as a documentary filmmaker, but the reason for inviting him up uh, this week is really to talk very specifically about um, regional production. Because as well as being an award-winning filmmaker in his own right, uh, Malcolm, as we'll hear in a minute, has had a huge amount to do with galvanizing the Southwest as a region uh, in terms of its uh, media production industry. And there's a lot that, that we can learn from that in, uh, in the Northeast. Um, so, Malcolm, thank you very much for coming. Good to have you here. Okay. Um, in between that first meeting and me actually coming to work for you, you moved. And by the time, uh, by the time we were working together, you'd become a regional indie. So tell me what the considerations and the factors were there and the things that you had to, to fight not to lose, if you like, when, when you left London. Um, well, first of all, everyone suddenly said, you know, why the hell are you leaving London? Because it, they all thought I'd sort of lost the plot, really. Um, which is, of course, if you have a billion pounds, you know, a, a more pouring into to, to London uh, from in, in terms of the BBC, um, and you know, year on year on year, and you know, the whole sort of inf infrastructure around the industry and, and Channel Four and, and and then Five and everybody else, ITV, they're all in London. So uh, while there was a, still a federalist ITV still existing, um, it really was a little bit like suddenly that you know. What's happened to Brinkworth? Well, he uh, comes, from, comes from Dorset now, and he uh, comes up with you know, his straw in his ear, and he talks to the commissioners. And, and it, it, we literally, you've kind of fell off the radar. So you've, instead of me having the kind of weekly, monthly routines I have with all the commissioners, you know, I suddenly, you know, are you still here? You know, oh, I thought you got out of telly. You know, I suddenly moved to Dorset. You know, I hadn't sort of fallen off the map. And, it was, and um, so it was a real hard struggle to do, because touch has always been network. It's all we do, I mean, and, and, and at that stage. So we'd never done anything regional. And I was suddenly in a strange situation whereby I have regional commissioners coming up and saying, why aren't you pitching to me for work? And you kind of go, well, I didn't know we did. You know, sort of what, what. And then we started making our first regional shows. And what was interesting for us was that the regional shows were a fantastic training ground. So we set up our own, because we were in Dorset, you know, for all sorts of personal circumstances, you know, we moved to Dorset. And, you know, I didn't have a huge talent pool around me. So we set up a, uh, um, a regional training scheme whereby we took, as a company, a whole bunch of people to, to, to in, in, we boarded them all, and we appointed two trainees every six months. And uh, they were working on, you know, effectively, then they started to work on, not only on network shows eventually, but also they had, a, they had a work in all our regional commissions. And it was fantastic because they had a real nursery slope. And actually all our trainees, you think about this. Yeah, all our trainees are still all working on major network television, and some of them are commissioners. Um, and they all got their breaks in regional telly. And one of the interesting things now is when now regional television doesn't exist anymore, the ITV Federalist structure has, has, has disappeared, you know, where do you then give you those young folk who are coming in the kind of breaks that they need in order to be able to do that? So you have to now think of it in a different way. Um, but it was a very good way for us of of trying to build a talent base. And it was at that point you begin to realize, oh, I know you've got the issues up here, that actually, in, you know, I mean, the Southwest, believe you me, may sound cozy because you've got Bristol and the whole sort of the diaspora of talent around the natural history unit, but the Southwest is an enormous bloody region. I don't know if you actually sort of look at the geography of it. You go from Cornwall to Bournemouth right up to the Southwest Regional Agency, a Development Agency, go, and the Southwest Green goes from, uh, let's say, literally from Land's End to, to Bournemouth. Uh, and, up, uh, and then right up to um, uh, Gloucestershire, and then right down Brist to Bristol. So it's this enormous area. And what was clear, absolutely like a sort of shining light when you got there, was 
where's the talent? You know, there is, you know, it's all spread all over the place. Yeah, there are lots of people working in London, some people working in Bristol, some pe few people working in Plymouth, a few people elsewhere, and, but there's no cohesiveness. So it was, became really clear that, um, that we had to do something about it, otherwise we were going to, like me and with the commissioners, you know, you're kind of you're somewhere beneath the radar. And um, so at that stage, it, it seemed to me that what we needed to try and do was to engage with the screen agency. So as a company, we then tried to say to the screen agency, right, the only way of getting this together is to have some kind of buzz, you know. So let's create an organization. So we set up this thing called the Wessex Media Group as the first one. Um, and rather like this, event-led, you know, you get speakers in, pull people in, and you start creating a dialogue between peers who not normally see each other, not normally meet each other, they don't talk to each other, and, you know, uh, uh, particularly if they're competitors, um, and s suddenly there was this sudden sense of, you know, of cohesiveness, and we, we felt a bit more of a region. And then, so I helped then set up one in Bristol, in Plymouth, and there were fourth one was set up in Gloucestershire. You, you say you set one up, one what? What, what were you It was a cluster. It was, we set the thing up called, not rather like telling it, I suppose, like here. <coughs> we set up the Wessex Media Group. Nice. Um, and we, the first thing we had to do with the original development agency was, first of all, prove that there was enough talent out there. So we did an economic audit. Of all the people in the profession who were, who were working, so we knew exactly who was where and what. What we then did a structural training survey so we knew what the needs were, the training needs were. We also then looked at sort of the, a wider sort of economic impact of the creative industry sector under the DCMS definition, because bearing in mind this is the year 2000, 2001, so you know, we're not into di digital media companies in the quite the same way we were, are now. Um, so having done that then, we had a case to answer. And from, I thought, 30, 40 different companies that might exist in, our, in the Wessex Mini Group, we had 170. And suddenly, out of 170, we started to realize that actually, none, as I say, none of these people do. Same in Plymouth, started a very small base. That then expanded. Same in Bristol is now a huge, the Bristol Mini Group is fantastic. If you ever want to go and see a successful media group's uh, cluster site, go to the Bristol one. It's um, properly financed now, it's all self-sustaining, it's all supporting, and that was the aim. So we got £40,000 then um, for each cluster for, the f for two, three years, um, financed by the RDA through the screen agency. And what that therefore meant was that we were able to set up each one with a proper part-time coordinator. And having a coordinator then meant there was someone who you always rang up or you emailed or whatever the case may do to really try and act as a proactive um, a person within 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 each cluster. So, so this was funded by by the, the screen agency, but independent but to it. Independent to it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they have now grown into really successful things. And as a result of that, um, it became clear that it wasn't just well, we started that in the southwest, but it also became clear that you know we were fighting you know real issues if you were a regional based producer anyway. Um, on a political level, so I started to get involved in PACT. 